Good evening, everyone. Before we get started, we'll have a moment of silence for those uh, employees that have passed before us. Angel Acevedo, student at Ellender Memorial High School. John Paul Hopgood, former interim Terrebonne Parish School Board member. Aura Mae White, retired school teacher. Holt Landry, retired school librarian. Rosie Price, retired school paraprofessional. Patricia Guidry, retired school paraprofessional. Kathy Davis, retired school food service technician. Donna Lee LeBlanc, retired school teacher. And Woodrow Woody Treg Jr., retired school bus operator. Moment of silence, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wazin. Meeting is called to order. Uh, invocation this evening. Uh, Mr. Ford, would you help us out with that? Father God, thank you for this opportunity for us to gather. Thank you for this opportunity for us to serve as stewards of the people this morning in the best interest of the people and everyone in this community and the stakeholders of the Terrible Parish School District. Be with us as we make decisions on behalf of the stakeholders. Be with us as we discuss the issues at hand. Be our words, be our grace. Be with us throughout this evening. Mr. Michael Gord, Mr. Gregory Horty, Mr. Matthew Ford, here, Mrs. Debbie Benoit, here, Mr. Don Crowdis, here, Mr. Clyde Hamner, here, Mr. Roger Dale Dehorn, here, Dr. Maybell Trahan, here, and Mr. Dane Boisan, here. Madam President, you have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Bronin. Uh, item number five on the agenda. Approval of the minutes of the special board meeting of June 27th and the regular board meeting of July the 5th. The board recommendation that the board approve the minutes of special school board meeting of June 27, 2023 and regular school board meeting of July 5th, 2023 as recorded. I'll make that my recommendation. So move Mr. Hamner, second by Mr. Voisin. Any public comment? Mr. Hamner? No comment. Mr. Voisin. Any other board members? Any other objections? None heard, so ordered. Item number six, special recognition of Mr. Blaze, Pe uh, B Blaze Pelliger, Louisiana State Department of Education, 2024 High School Principal of the Year semi-finalist. Blaze, are you here? Yes, he is. Sure do. All right, I'd like to thank the board and, of course, the supervisory staff that recommended me as the Terrebonne Parish uh, Principal of the Year, uh, especially during the time that we had just gone through. We'd come through Hurricane Ida, gotten through COVID, uh, so I felt, especially when I wrote my entries, that it was very important that I express what our parish was going through, especially the entire east side of home. Being from South Terrebonne and then also Ellender, I felt very proud to represent what we had done with those two schools. Um, again, so I thank you, and then I also thank my wife because those nine years as being a high school principal, she sacrificed a lot of time as well as the rest of my family so that I could be there for my schools. So thank you all. And we, th we thank you because you have kept both of those schools in a very hard, tra traumatic time, and you kept things going, and not just going, but improving. Any other board members? Yes. Mr. Dehart? Oh, we'll start the, uh, the front, Mr. Uh, Hamner. Sure, I have a little bit I want to say about Mr. Pellegram. I'm especially proud of you, Blaze, uh, being your former teacher. Uh, actually, Blaze taught me the physics. I didn't teach him the physics. Um, you know, 
you, you've been a, a leader in the school system for I don't know how many years now, and it couldn't come to a more deserving person. I'm, I'm, I'm especially proud of you. Thanks, sir. I just want to congratulate you, and I'm cheering you on to get that top spot in this competition. Thank you. Mr. Ford? I've always been a champion of this Pell Grant, so keep up the good work, sir. Thank you. Mr. Dior? Blaze, with your heart and passion that I've seen personally, I really, really admire you, and I hope you never take your foot off the accelerator because I tell you what, your heart's there for kids. And uh, you work very hard, and I appreciate all the sacrifices you had, and thank your wife for allowing you to do all of that because uh, I always teased you about give a picture to your wife so she don't forget what she looked like, <laughs> especially at high school. And I'm just saying all that extracurricular stuff, but you've always been loyal to, to everybody that you represented, and your heart and passion is really, really evident. So thank you so much for your service. Thank you. Um, teaching with you, being administrated with you, you were master teacher for a month maybe, okay, and then so. it pulled you. So. <laughs> um, it's an honor. I've always been a supporter of you. You've been a great uh, everything, everything you've done, teaching as well as administrator. And I have confidence that you're going to get all the way to the top, okay? And Thanks. if you do or don't, you're still a winner, right? Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, So, Blaze, uh, you you uh, took on a, a a very important role at at Ellender at a time uh, of, of uh, I guess strife and, and being in the portables. You, you did so well, particularly going back and you embraced it to the point that um, there's going to potentially be a, a big reward for Ellender this year. Potentially, we, we don't know that yet. It's a little premature to say that, but you. They're, they're going to grow uh, in, in, in some of your, your under your leadership. So thank you for, for growing South Terrible and growing Eleanor initially and then coming back and, and growing Eleanor some more. So we're, we're proud of you for that. Thank you for what you do for the kids. And I don't know what I can add to that, except I've been knowing you since you took your first breath. And uh, I've been proud of you ever since. But we have a little something for you. By the way, I made such an impression on Mr. Pellegrin, he decided to get the same hairstyle as me. Uh, item number seven, meeting announcements. Goodness, how short the summer has been. August the 7th, first day of school. The 15th, committee meetings, starting with education, technology, and policy, finance, insurance, section 16 lands, executive committee, and then buildings, food service, and transportation. All those meetings start at five. On, no, on September the 4th, the Labor Day holiday, and on November, uh, excuse me, September the 5th, we have the regular school board meeting for the month of September. Item number eight, school board meeting reports. First one today is buildings, food service, transportation. Mr. Hamden. Mm. Oh, that is right, Mr. Wozniak. Thank you. I gave you, I was giving you a promotion. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. The BFT committee met at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, July 18, 2023, in the boardroom of the school board office with the following members myself as chair, Mr. Harding, vice chair, Dr. Traham. Also in attendance were Mr. Crowdis, Mr. Hamner, Mr. Ford, Ms. Benoit, Mr. DeHart, Superintendent Ogeron, and members of his staff. Recommendation number one, the committee recommends that the board approve and accept the lowest bid received meeting all specifications for the light bulbs bid for the 23-24 school year from Economical Janitorial and Paper Supplies, LLC, P.O. Box 23607, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70183. 
Move. So move, Mr. DeHart. Second. Second, Mr. Hamner. Any public comments? Mr. DeHart? No, sir. Mr. Hamner? No comment. Any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, recommendation passes. Recommendation number two, the committee recommends that the board approve and accept the lowest bid received, meeting all specifications for the grease trap and sewer sump station services bid for the 23-24 school year from Denny's Sewer Treatment Plants, P.O. Box 504, Berg, Louisiana, 70343. So moved. So moved, Mr. Hamner. Second. Second, Mr. Crowders. Any public comments? Mr. Hamner? No comment. Mr. Crowders? No comment. Any board, other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Recommendation number three, the committee recommends that the board approve and accept a substantial completion dated June 17, 2023 for the building repair products, pro projects in response to Hurricane Ida at South Down Elementary and Grand Caillou Middle Schools and ratify change order number one in the amount of $7,718.53. South Down Elementary School alum aluminum gate repairs and reseam metal roof panels subject to the punch list upon completion of the punch list and final inspection balancing change order and receipt of the lien free certificate authorize the release of retainage and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto so move, so move mr crowders second mr dehart any public comments mr crowders mr dehart no. public um any other board members uh, a quick question the seventy seven hundred dollars is that uh coming out the general fund budget or is that a fema reimbursable or do we know thank you any other board members any objections hearing none motion passes <clears throat> Recommendation number four, the committee recommends that the board approve and accept the substantial completion dated June 8, 2023 for the roof repair project in response to Hurricane Ida at Homa Junior High. Subject to the punch list upon completion of the punch list and final inspection and receipt of the lien free certificate, authorize the release of retainage and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So move. So move, Mr. Hamner. Second, Second Dr. Traha. Any public comments? Mr. Hamner. Uh, no comment. Dr. Tron? No, sir. Other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Recommendation number five, the committee recommends that the board approve and accept the lowest bid received, meeting all specifications for the building repair project in response to Hurricane Ida at Berg Elementary School from Delcon LLC, P.O. Box 916, Berwick, Louisiana, 70342, in the amount of $608,000 and establish a total project budget in the amount of $676,686. Funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds, $609,017.40, and local funds, $67,668.60, and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So move. So move, Mr. DeHart. Second. Second, Mr. Crowdis. Any public comments? Mr. DeHart? No, sir. Mr. Crowdis? Other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Recommendation number six, the committee recommends that the board approve and accept the lowest bid received, meeting all specifications for the building repair project in response to Hurricane Ida at West Park Administration Building from Knockhans Painting and Waterproofing, Inc., P.O. Box 526, Thibodeau, Louisiana, 70302, in the amount of $230,056 and establish a total project budget in the amount of $258,390. Funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds, $232,551, and local funds, $25,839, and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So move. So move, Mr. Hamner, second, Mr. Crowdis. Any public comments? I think it was Mr. Hamner, was it? Oh, yes, Mr. So sorry, Mr. DeHart. Y'all sound alike. Oh, man. I, <laughs> I never heard Mr. Crowder say anything. He, oh, I heard Mr. Crowder over I here. Him. He's on my I left ear. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'll, I'll give the that. motion to Mr. DeHart, second by Mr. Crowder. Any public comments? Mr. DeHart? No, sir. Causing trouble. I made the motion. Yeah. <laughs> now y'all are confusing me. <laughs> Mr. Crowder? All right. That's all right. I'm good. 
Um, any other, uh, what you guys are called, board members. <laughs> See, you messed up my, 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 my groove, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, any objections? No, would you start over there? <laughs> Hearing none, motion passes. Oh, my goodness. Recommendation number seven, the committee recommends that the board approve and accept the substantial completion dated May 30, 2023 for the abatement project at East Homer Elementary, Village East Elementary, and Koto Bayou Blue Elementary Schools in response to Hurricane Ida. Subject to the punch list, upon completion of the punch list and final inspection and receipt of the lien free certificate, authorize the release of retainage and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So move, Ms. Thank Benoit. You, Ms. Thank you. <laughs> Took a lady I'll to do second that. One. Second, Mr. Hamner. <laughs> Public comments. Ms. Benoit. Yes, sir. Mr. Hamner. No Other board members. Any objections? Hearing none. Motion passes. Recommendation number eight. The committee recommends that the board approve and authorize the purchasing department to advertise for bids for automated fuse and dispensing services. So move. So move, Mr. Hamner. Second, Mr. DeHart. Public comments? Mr. Hamner? No comment. Mr. DeHart? No, sir. Any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Recommendation number nine. The committee recommends that the board approve and accept the substantial completion dated July 14, 2023 for the site preparation for Lacash Middle School temporary campus project in response to Hurricane Ida and ratify change order number one in the amount of $3,850 additional tree trimming subject to the punch list upon completion of the punch list and final inspection balancing change order and receipt of the lien free certificate authorize the release of retainage and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So moved, Dr. Trahan. Second. Second, Ms. Benoit. Any public comments? Dr. Trahan? No, sir. Ms. Benoit? Yes, sir. Other board members? Uh, <clears throat> yes, sir. Mr. Ford? I'm, I'm just looking at the agenda for your committee, and I, I don't know a better time to say this, but you know, I may be off by saying it. But we've been hearing a lot of speculation about all this recovery and, re and construction, and I just want to say that as a board member and a potentially a, a good steward of people's money. I would rather pay 10% of 15 projects than 100% of just one project. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's getting overlooked. And I, maybe I'm off by saying it right now, but it's time that everyone accepts that and understands that. The silver lining here is that 15 buildings just tonight are getting repaired or even potentially rebuilt at 10% of the cost. We're having to pay 10% of that. And two years ago, we were debating building one new school. So I think it's just time for us to be grateful. That's, That's all. And I've just been holding my tongue a little bit too long for that. Yes. So thank you. I appreciate that. And that's very true. Um, you hate to say, you know, it, had to t it took a hurricane to do it. But, uh, you know, we need to be grateful for everything we're going to get from all of this. And thank FEMA and our little guy in the back. Thank you. <laughs> Everything you've done for us, appreciate it. Okay. Um, any other uh, board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. The remaining were was informational uh, project managers, architects that came up. Okay. So uh, before we close out, Mr. Oshawa. If, if, I, if I could give an update. What Matt uh, Ford said, um, we have a lot going on. One, one school in particular, Mr. Crowdis' school, Legion Park, has five active projects going on in that one school. Air conditioning, roofing, floors, ceilings and lights, and walls and windows. Why all at one time? Because we had to take advantage of contractor times and also FEMA, not FEMA, but ESSER monies and timelines on that. So it's a lot going on. So um, if you look at the school now, it's, 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 it's a little rough looking, but we're, 
we've been assured that it will be ready to receive kids on Monday. Uh, so with that said, the whole bottom floor is going to be sealed up. Outside and inside will be sheetrocked and waterproof. Um, all the lights that can be hung will be hung. We'll have lights, maybe not suspended ceilings. It will be ready to receive kids. They covered floor, they clean floors and covered them so that it wouldn't get further damaged or dirty. We can take the covering off and we'll have clean floors, which will be replaced. They're temporary floors. Um, the principal and assistant principal are working with the contractors and they're gonna shuffle kids around upstairs so they can work on rooms, certain rooms at, at a time and move kids across, then back in when they're finished. So it's gonna be rough until it gets better. But when it's all said and done, we'll have five major things that are going to update that school tremendously and be really good for kids. Um, so that's Legion Park. Uh, we're going to give teachers Thursday and Friday, which are Staff Development Day and Records Day, just time to get their rooms ready. So, so they'll have like little meetings to kind of talk about certain procedural things in the school. Other than that, they'll have Thursday, Friday, and the weekend to kind of get ready for Monday. It's going to be tight. Once we get through this rough phase, it'll be a whole lot better down the line. Um, another one is Acadian. And Acadian, if you, you know, Mr. DR said and Mr. Ford said about the work happening and you're looking at where's work happening, Acadian would be a great school to see work in progress and see the new compared to the old and what it does to transform a school. Just flooring, lighting, and ceilings updates a building immediately. And that school is in the process of kind of getting updated. It looks great. Uh, with a lot more work to do, but they're going to be ready. Uh, you mentioned Lacash in one of the uh, recommendations here, and for substantial completion, uh, they're ready to go. You know, in a brand new area, brand new facility. Uh, they were bringing John and his crew were bringing materials today, so that teachers can have everything they need Thursday and Friday to get started. Curricular things that were in the school, that they'll be ready to go in a new site. Administration is like confident that. Uh, Parent drop off and bus situation will work flawlessly with South Carroll. Um, so those are just a few things. If you look at HL Bourgeois, we had our staff development day or new teacher orientation at Bourgeois. Stuff happening all over Bourgeois, but it's ready for kids. Um, Andy's here. He's giving us updates on, on the progress of Bourgeois. Um, they're starting on some facilities outside, working inside, piping, air conditioner, steel. A lot of stuff happening even in Bourgeois. We could go on, like Mr. Ford said, about all the projects. Those are just a few I wanted to highlight because we're about to start school, obviously, Monday. And uh, those are ones that are kind of pressing uh, to be ready. But they're going to be ready. We'll have them ready. Can I? Yes, ma'am. Ask something. Um, so one of the schools that we have not talked about, but we've talked about it uh, with you and with other board members, I know that there's something getting ready to come about there, and that's Terrebonne High. I had a... Um, couple of constituents and who also are alumni of Terrebonne and they've been in the school recently and they were very disappointed about what it looked like inside yes, and, and but they don't know that we have plans for that because we haven't really talked about that much yes, can you talk a little bit about what's to come for that school so so initially we're going to work through some of the hurricane repairs we have some canopies and some windows and that's going to get done first and, and that's our primary responsibility uh, we're working with Burgess Rome architects and, and, and they're coming up with renovations for that school that are going to update it modernize it and make the space flow a whole lot better in a modern school uh, we're looking he's looking heavily at band relocating band to uh, the existing library moving the library to another area in the school. Band's elated. They're getting a bigger space, higher ceilings. If that gets approved, that, that's kind of what he's looking at now. Um, we're looking at a bigger and more spacious athletic facility, which, you know, when we compare what we have now, it's, it's an old school. It doesn't hold a candle to other schools in uh, just newer districts, the St. Hamity's, the Ascensions, and all those, St. John's. We, we, we're, we're inferior when it comes to our facilities we know that so these will be just updated upgraded more spacious and, and people excited we're gonna um, probably make enough space inside the building so that we don't need to put kids at home at junior high and portables so we talked about building a wing 
we probably won't need to build a wing. We can find space within. We have just examples of like classes that are double classes. We have a class and a lab. Well, if I'm using a lab every once in a while, once a week, every other week, we don't need double classes. We can have shared labs and take a class to assign it to one of the classes that might have been at home at junior high, just to buy space. The other main thing we're doing in Terrebonne High, or we want to do, and this is, I think we're in consensus with this, is take the office from the second floor, put it on the first floor, build a nice vestibule with that existing lobby that's got historical paintings and everything there so that we can make that a safe entry um, and then have kind of, when guests come in, be buzzed into the office area where concerts and entries are. And the library would potentially be right across the hall. I, I could go on, but those are the kind of main things we're looking at. He's even looking at like drives in the front yard so we can stack parent drop off a lot better than what we're doing now and making a nice secure space for kids to congregate in the circle with a, a fence that'll close and, and be secure outside of bus times. Mm -hmm. so and that's that awesome. We put some beautification, landscaping, <clears> all that kind of stuff. That particular architect, I've seen his work in New Orleans at old schools where he's taken them and revised or renovated them to the extent that you can't even tell that they were old and you know, uh, crumbling, basically. He is phenomenal, so I'm so happy that we have him doing this work, and I think that people are gonna be really impressed after they see the uh, kinds uh, of things so. that he does. And, and obviously, we'll, we'll, we're gonna do everything in phases, so we'll do phase one, two, three, and so forth, and, and, uh, but we're excited about what he's presenting to us. That's Terrebonne High, yes sir. I just wanna to add to that, for the Terrebonne High, you alluded to it, you didn't mention it, but I want to make sure everyone knows this is intentionally brought to this particular uh, architect that we want to maintain the That's integrity right. of yes, the sir. school mm -hmm. and how it looks, yes, that historical value. So we want to spruce it up, but it's going to maintain that same facade and the same you know, layout. And Well, not so much the layout, but the way that it it looks from the road, right? That's well, what we preservation want to make. is really exactly. his thing. He, that's what he does. And, and we're, we're pressure washing it currently, uh, so that's getting done. So, that, like you said, that, that'll stay uh, intact. And, and simple things like changing flooring, paint, and ceilings with the right LED lights, that is going to transform the, the hallways and classrooms as well. So, that's part of the, the whole package that we're looking at here, just to kind of get it. Dr. Traha? Uh, Mr. Dehart wanted to speak to William oh. first. I'll come back. All right. Okay, Mr. Dehart. Thank you. I want to add on to a little, this, a little bit of this discussion, starting with Mr. Ford's comments and every, every board member's comments so far, is that right now we have a, the biggest disaster this school system has ever seen since I've been here. We have multiple architects that do excellent work through the parish, nothing against Mr. Rome or any com you know negative comments, just that we have the expertise to get us back better than what we, we were before this hurricane. The funding sources, we have many opportunities, you know, with FEMA and our 10%, like Mr. Ford said. And later in the Finance Committee, I'm offer a suggestion, and it's only a suggestion to be more transparent, because I'm gonna tell you right now, no matter what we say in here right now, I know people can uh, see our meetings live, but at the same time, whenever things started, Facebook is killing us everywhere. And the facts are incorrect. At the time, they were putting it, but it just keeps going over and over and over, and people keep reviewing it. So I really believe for us to be more transparent, like whenever we, we have, like you say, ESSA funds to do something, we, United This Board, has moved some of those fundings that can be used for that responsibly. And that gives people more information to say, you know, we're doing as much as we can, as fast as we can with the circumstances. So out of respect to the board and the staff that we're working together and all these architects and project managers, the whole group, we've been devastated. And to me, I'm hoping to offer something, a suggestion in the Finance Committee report on our budget. And it's not about any other thing to be more transparent because the more the public knows where the money's coming from, how it's being, being spent, and where it's being spent, 
All of the schools are important. We the eighth largest school district in the state of Louisiana. That's a, a thing that a lot of people don't know in their Facebook, okay? But what I'm trying to say to you is that the multiple sites that was damaged, this was a really devastating year. So I'm just offering a positive comment to say all of this discussion, I do strongly believe in all of it. And I think there's a little bit more we can do to inform the public about what we're doing. And it's through our budgetary process, but it's not changing the process, it's just being more transparent. So I'm offering that later in discussion. That way we'll be talking just about the finance. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Mr. DeHart. Mr. Chairman. Yep. Uh, Dr. Trahan. I uh, took it upon myself to make a document of all the board actions since the schools reopened after the storm and listed it by, because I got tired really of going back and looking through agendas after agenda and looking trying to find something that I needed to answer a constituent's uh, inquiry. So I made a document and I listed by each school every board action we took whether it was in committee or full board for each school by school. Um, that, that document yesterday got over 30 pages long of single lines, 12 font. That, that is how much we've done since the storm. And I wanted to add about uh, LaCash. I was at the, uh, the modular campus on Saturday. The teachers were hard at work. They had been there since daylight. They were, I went there about three in the afternoon and they weren't about ready to quit. They were gonna be pro there probably until the principal threw them out because they were, they were so excited to get their, their things delivered and, and they were working on their classrooms. And I, I, saw, I heard a lot of laughter and I saw a lot of smiles. And I saw a lot of people happy to be in a clean environment, which they didn't have in the old building. And they were, they were, they're doing great and they're gonna be very happy. There for sure there's a few kinks trying to get in and moved in and get everything working. A couple of, uh, little, a couple of uh, electricity issues here and there, but that's all, of that. that's all little stuff that's gonna be taken care of. So I want to express how well things are going at the new campus for LaCache. So uh, along those lines as well, we're going to meet with the architect, uh, with orchestrate Shelley Olivier, and uh, she's revised her initial plan for the South Terrebonne Middle Building. So uh, going back to this this whole process, um, per perspective is a is a key factor. You know, it, it it's like a window or or a, or a mirror. You you you've, you've got two sides of that window pane. And what we talked about, I had been passed um, by Legion several times, and it uh, just seemed like things were not uh, moving quite as fast. So had a conversation with the superintendent and uh, even stopped by a couple of times and introduced myself to the uh, foreman and, and everything just to kind of ask some questions and all. And so perspective. And I think the superintendent and I finally came to the conclusion and to, to sort of summarize everything, and everyone has spoken well and eloquently about it, but and we came to the conclusion that sometimes you have to walk through the weeds to get to the prairie and that's what we've been doing we've kind of been walking through the weeds going through FEMA going through architects contractors delays in orders delays in supplies and we're, we're, we're walking through those weeds right now but as Mr. Ford alluded to with the multiple projects when it's all said and done the prairie is going to be beautiful it's going to be great to see. It's going to be great for the community and for the schools. So thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Crowdis. Mr. Hamler. I, I don't know if I can follow up on that beautiful <laughs> remark, but uh, I'll, I'll just, yeah. I, I just have a bit of trivia. The, the, uh, the, 
the architect, the lead architect on Terrebonne High, and I'm glad that Matt and, and, and I'm glad Debbie, uh, Ms. Benoit said, uh, uh, mentioned the architects because uh, the lead architect from Vargas Rome happens to be a, a, a descendant of the original architect for Terrebonne High. And he is treating that, um, he was born and raised right here in Terrebonne Parish, but he's, he's treating this like it's his, uh, his own baby. And he's so excited about doing that. Um, and I just want to throw that out as some trivia. You know, next time y'all at a cocktail party, you can say, hey, guess what? You know? Thank you, Mr. Hamner. Anyone else? Um, let's see, I covered that. There being no further business to come before the building's food service and transportation committee, the meeting was adjourned at 6.55 p.m. I turn the meeting back over to you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Wazan. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is a report from the Education, Technology, and Policy Committee, report of July 18th. Ms. Benwell. Um, thank you, Dr. Trahan. The Education, Technology, and Policy Committee met immediately following the 5 p.m. Buildings, Food Service, and Transportation Committee meeting on Tuesday, July 18th, 2023, in the boardroom of the school board office. Present were myself as chair, Mr. Matthew Ford as vice chair, and Mr. Don Crowdis as member. Also in attendance was Dr. Mabel Trahan, Mr. Dane Boisam, Mr. Clyde Hamner, Superintendent Bubba Ogeron, and members of the staff. Um, this meeting basically consisted of uh, information items. Um, we had the chief academic officer uh, and the directors and supervisors of um, some of our um, programs address us on and give us some updates about some of the actions that will be taking place this uh, school year in 23-24. And um, this actually will become a standing item on the monthly agenda somehow or some way. We, we haven't decided yet if all of them will speak every month or a few of them or whatever, but we'll make that determination. But we will have continual updates all, all year long. Um, but before I turn the meeting back over, I have a couple of comments that I'd like to make. Um, it would be remiss if we didn't talk about um, what happened just recently with the uh, new teacher orientation this week. We had the chief academic officer, the curriculum specialist, and instructional staff do a really good job with this orientation. And I, I'd be remiss if I wouldn't also include the superintendent's debut as a crooner uh, to the, <laughs> the teachers, which I think was thoroughly enjoyed by everyone. I, I certainly enjoyed seeing it. Um, but over 100 new teachers attended this conference orientation and uh, re we received overwhelming positive reviews from the participants. And just as an example, some comments were amazing job, helped me feel better prepared to tackle my first year here. Uh, I absolutely love the three-day orientation. I was, it was so informative and will help me this year in my goals and teaching and becoming a better educator. It was very nice. It answered many questions I had and made me less anxious. So a job well done to all, and thank you for all those that participated in it, including those new teachers. So other than that, we had no other business, so I turn the meeting back over to you. Thank you, Ms. Benoit. <coughs> the next item on the agenda is the Finance, Insurance, and Section 16 Lands Committee report. Madam Mr. President, Hamner. Madam, can we get a motion to accept the education report? Entirety. Oh, we need a motion to accept the report so since you didn't have a recommendation. Moved by whom? Excuse me. Mr. Ford. Ford. Second by? No. By Crowders. Any public comment? Mr. Ford? <coughs> Crowders? Any other board members? Any objections? None heard so ordered. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. The Finance, Insurance, and Section 16 Lands Committee met immediately following the 5 p.m. Buildings, Food Service, and Transportation Committee and the Education, Technology, and Policy Committee on Tuesday, July 18th in the boardroom of the school board office with the following members present, myself, the chairman, and Mr. Don Crowdis, who was uh, added on as an ad hoc member. Uh, also in attendance were Dr. Mabel Traha, Mr. Dane Guazan, Mr. Matt Ford, Superintendent Argeron, and members of the staff. The meeting was called to order. Uh, we first heard a report from Mr. Curtis Constranza, our risk manager, 
who presented information regarding the upcoming life insurance renewal uh, that that will be on the next finance committee meeting um, recommendation number one the committee recommends that the board approve and adopt the following budget adoption resolution which provides for adopting the original operating budgets for the general operating fund the one cent sales tax fund the half cent sales tax fund the three quarter cent sales tax fund child nutrition program fund and the various special revenue funds for the 23-24 fiscal year and that resolution is attached on, on the following four or five pages so moved, moved by mr ford seconded by mr uh, dehart uh, any members of the public wish to address this motion concerning the adoption of the budget mr ford yes, sir. mr dehart i'd like to ask y'all indulgence for uh, the comments i made earlier in the other committee and it's a suggestion and i don't think it's going to change or hamper anything to be more transparent to our constituency to know what's going on and i'll give you the example as brief as i can and right now the resolution that that's in you said multiple pages there's a general provision and i'd like to just read that paragraph with your permission sir and show you where my comment is i think it's going to be more positive uh all original operating budgets for the physical year of all funds programs grants and projects shall be presented to the finance committee the finance committee shall submit such budgets to the board accompanied by the committee's recommendation for adoption or rejection i really believe that whenever you where, where are you reading from mr dehart i'm on general page provision. number nine page. general provisions number eight, nine one eight after reading that i look at provision number two a and i would like to ask permission to either um, add or or consider an amendment to have number one and like i say i'm not trying to change anything because i do know respect the superintendent's position and the chief financial officer but i'd like to see these types of things whenever we are doing to a one that it be brought to the finance committee for information that way more people know what's going on and we as board members are going to get updates just like mr Armstrong gave earlier and i'll just give you one perfect good good example that i'm very excited that i learned for the first time we had COVID funding that we replaced a lot of air conditioners and that was brought through the committees and mr Armstrong presented it and this board was overwhelmed with it and public responded i'm talking about i know i got a lot of positive response about air conditioning being replaced so that's my motive to say i'm asking for a friendly admin, amendment or whatever whatever means or listen to discussion i'm not trying to rule anything just that we are all up here responsible for this budget we are all wanting to do as much as we can but we need to get the public more informed and that's the only objective i'm trying to do and like i say i'm not here for any other reason suggesting this is just that more people's gonna know what we're doing where the money's coming from like FEMA like mr. Ford he started the, the conversation and I just thought it'd be more transparent for the public to know That's so all I have. What, what I'm hearing you say is you would like to see the like things like the ESSER funds uh, brought uh, it's uh, not it's not about just getting it approved or rejected it's just that it's information for all of us to know and look we are we we got resources to know but our public don't know and this facebook stuff is killing us about the wrong information i'm trying to get it clearer to the public that we mm -hmm. represent and the children we are working for to know what's going on and like i say mr angeron and the chief financial officer uh and the whole all the staff is working diligently to make these things happen i just like to be more transparent uh I think you got an excellent idea, Mr. Uh, Dehart. But could you could you do me a favor? Rather than changing the language of the resolution, would, could could we bring that to the finance committee in the form of a second motion so that it can That's go through? Fine. That's fine. Um, yeah, and then you, we we would have a, a written out motion yes, sir. that we could. Uh, I'll work with you on that, Mr. Yeah, uh, I uh, definitely. And the superintendent think anything anything that involves transparency with the budget is definitely something we should consider well, uh, I, I I just I have uh, 
I'm, a, I'm afraid to mess with the resolution okay. because um, um, I, I understand the caution yeah. but all I'm trying to say is that I'm trying to inform the public more yeah for them to review this budget because I didn't bring my book today it's right there mm -hmm. it's this thing and to look at all of that no one from the public even us you know we we all have to ask staff questions and all I'm saying to you that yeah we get information all year round the public only sees what they see right and I want the public to be more more involved and in knowing what's going on instead of you know calling us no matter what changes are taking place and all I'm saying to you, it's not gonna change I hope it doesn't change anything because that's not my motive it just being more transparent yeah I, I don't have no problem with doing that so I'll I'll that, go ahead and, and keep my comment and I'm not gonna uh, suggest anything at this point uh, Mr. Ford, did you have something to say? Well, if I'm understanding correctly, we, we are passing this because this is went through committee, but I'm reading this general provision, and I think it already accomplishes what he's asking for, which it says everything must be presented to committee, but it's not required to pass through committee. Committee just makes a recommendation to approve or reject it. So everything already goes through committee, but I understand there's also the added bonus that he wants to have that that uh, that transparency. So we should make those items public uh, once they hit committee before they go to the board. So the language here is is great. If anything, it needs to go to the Ed Technology and Policy Committee. You may be correct to on that. A That's policy that we we put these things forth to the public so yeah we'll work on it from our end we'll take care of that i think we're all on the right page yeah mm -hmm. thank you mr dehart any um thank you well let's see does mr dehart made the motion does anybody in the public i think i asked already want to address it hmm? i'm on board yeah i'll second it you okay any other members of the uh, board wish to address the uh, motion on the resolution? Any objection to the motion? Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you. Okay. That was a biggie, y'all. That was an important motion. Um, recommendation number two. Uh, The committee recommends that the board approve and adopt the following resolution in reference to the Louisiana Compliance Questionnaire for 22-23 fiscal year. Uh, that it also is uh, uh, follows the motion. Uh, do I hear? Moved by Dr. Trahan, seconded by Mr. Uh, Lagarde. Um, Does anybody in the general public wish to address the motion regarding the compliance questionnaire? Does anybody in the general office audience know what a compliance questionnaire is? Okay. Ms. Bro, I saw you back there. I got some curious people. Where's she at? She's hiding? No. Oh, she's step up. Come, come tell our audience about what a compliance questionnaire is. I could do it, but you're so much more prettier than me. Yeah, pretty easy. <laughs> She's been looking at all of us. So, so a compliance questionnaire is um, the board stating that it has followed all necessary guidelines, all necessary laws, all applicable guidance, and has not violated any of those in the past year. And so we, we attest to that every year prior to our auditors coming in. You, questions on it? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Bro. Um, who made the motion? Dr. Trahan. Uh, Dr. Trahan and Mike. seconded. Mike. Okay, you. Mike. Mr. Lagarde. Mike. Oh, do you have any comments? Uh, any other members of the board uh, hearing uh, any objection to the motion? 
Hearing none, the motion passes. And uh, finally, Ms. Klingman did a superb job uh, of presenting information regarding the uh, monthly budget to actual uh, comparison reports and the sales tax collections for the month of May. There being no further business to become before the Finance, Insurance, and Section 16 Lands Committee, we adjourned at 7.50 p.m. Madam Chair, I'll turn the meeting back over to you. Thank you, Mr. Hamner. Uh, next <coughs> item on the agenda, uh, item D, Executive Committee Report for July 18, 2022. Dear members of the board, the Executive Committee met immediately following the 5 p.m. Buildings, Food Service, and Transportation Committee meeting, committee, excuse me, Education, Technology, and Policy Committee, and the Finance, Insurance, and Section 16 Lands Committee. Meetings on Tuesday, July 18, 2023, in the boardroom of the school board office with the following members present. Myself, President, Mr. Dean Boisin, Vice President, Mr. Michael Lagarde was, was not present that evening. Also in attendance were Mr. Amda, Mr. Ford, Mr. Crowders, Mr. Ogeron, and members of his staff. The meeting was called to order. The executive committee examined and authorized payment of invoices for the current month, including supplemental payroll and travel expenses. There were no committee member concerns during that meeting. But do we have a motion to accept the report? Motion by Mr. Voisin, second by Mr. Dehart. Mr. Ford. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Ford. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Good. Any public comment? Mr. Voisin, Mr. Ford. Any other, any objections? Oh, excuse me, any other board members? Any objections? None heard, so ordered. That being no further business to come before the executive committee, it was adjourned at 7.53 p.m. Next item on the agenda is the superintendent's agenda, item nine. Okay, item nine, A1, matter pertaining to the adoption of resolution to amend the Terrebonne Parish School Board election districts in accordance with federal and state statutes. The recommendation is that the board adopt the following resolution to amend the Terrebonne Parish School Board election districts in accordance with federal and state statutes. So and the resolution so is attached. So moved. Oh, excuse me. Just moved by. Four. Four. Second. Four. Second by Ms. Benoit. Benoit. Any public comment? We have Mr. Josh Manning. Yes. Uh, Mr. Josh Manning, are you in the room? And he's going to come and uh, give us some meat and potatoes about this resolution yes. of, and why we are seeing this tonight. Yes, good evening. Um, this is basically just a resolution cleaning up a couple of things in the redistricting ordinance that you all um, adopted way back in, in uh, gosh, yeah, March 2022, I believe. Um, basically, if you recall, there was a delay in that census being released to us, and everyone in the state was out and about redistricting at the same time. So we were redistricting <coughs> with the school board, um, and also at the same time, the House and the Senate and all the state legislatures were redistricting as well. So during that process, uh, there were a couple of areas where we tried to clean up some precinct lines. Uh, smooth, th smooth th some things out. Um, and there are three small areas where we ended up having a total of seven registered voters across three new precincts that were created. We intended to merge those precincts with adjacent precincts, but because of state rep representative lines just happened to using those same boundaries, we couldn't do that. Now we probably created 20 30 other precincts where we were able to merge and, and make that happen. It was just these three areas because of house district lines. So what we're asking tonight, we brought this to the school board um, earlier this year, um, at the end of last year actually, they changed the precincts, they slightly adjusted the council districts to make, to you know, so that we're not creating these precincts with one registered voter or five registered voters in that precinct. So we're just asking you all tonight to consider making those exact same changes that is in the uh, resolution. Again, this only affects seven registered voters throughout the parish in three different areas. Any questions for Ms. Dahl? Ms. I just got a comment. I had the privilege, this is the third time I was in this process, and i tell you what, I know I'm just speaking on my district and not only mine, but this is the biggest change I've ever had in 30 years. 
uh, so much has been added to my district. And I'm not meaning, because I don't know the registered voters numbers, but I'm just saying, I'm one of the largest districts according to precincts, uh, but seven, eight, and nine and, are and all three large. Unfortunately, I was looking at the population trends from the Census Bureau Correct. today, and those population trends continue to decrease. Yep. Um, you know, we were at 109,000 in Terrebonne Parish at the time of the census. Right. As of July yes. 2022, um, the census says we only have 104,000 people in right. the parish. So it, those numbers are continuing to decrease according to the Census Bureau. I, I personally didn't agree with the, the alignment, but because of the rules, right. I had no choice. Right. And all I'm saying to you that that's the third time this process has been done. Every 10 years it's done. So I have, you know, over 30 years. So what I'm saying is that this was a nightmare. It was, and we worked with the parish council at the same time, working on the same districts. And uh, that's helpful for the constituents of Terrebonne Parish to know the district lines and where, where they are. Because I couldn't believe I had a polling place all the way in Gibson. <laughs> so, and uh, I represent Terrebonne Parish. So, but thank you all for the hard work. And yes, this company has done an excellent job all the years. I've, I've served on this board very thorough. And I tell you what, we've never had any kind of hiccup with any things that we've done because we followed the rules to the T. Yes, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any Don't other questions for Mr. Manning? Mr. Ford? I don't have a question, but I want to I want to make it known, you know, Mr. Dehart kind of glazed over or something and it's I want to emphasize that uh, these gentlemen came to us and the parish council and they created a joint committee yeah. to work on this redistricting so we had some consistency among the Terrebonne Parish School District and the Terrebonne Parish Council yeah. uh, we adopted ours a year before they did theirs and they had some better recommendations than what are here it's just the state didn't adopt exactly what they presented and they put in a lot of work and a lot of time and energy and so did those committees that we served on Roger Dell and I and yep. Greg and uh, I think that you know it kind of gets overlooked all the things that's going on and people see oh redistricting oh they're trying to gerrymander and they're trying to do this and do that no this is this was very intentional it was our you know our, our uh, census redistricting that happens every 10 years and this has been an ongoing process for almost three years now actually more than three years because the census started in uh, January February 2020 so look I, I think we're gonna have to do whatever it is you guys recommend because from day one we've put our full faith and trust in you guys and, and no one up here is a subject matter expert except for uh, Josh so thank you for that time and thank you for coming to the board and actually explaining what's going on. So thank you. Thank you. Ms. Benmore? Um, so there's only a few districts that really have made Correct. changes. I'm um, seeing four, no change in District 4. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Any other board members? Ms. Regards. What district was the changes from the Sure. So I can, I can. So I can, I can kind of explain, and I do have some maps if you want me to um, pass those around um, after I go over it. Um, there was a small area in Precinct 22 that was actually inadvertently created. Um, it was an area where the precinct, again, the precinct boundary as written and as shown on the geography actually did not match the district boundary, and there was only literally one registered voter. It's along uh, Highway 311 and um, it's right near Bull Run Road. And so it was just one of those things that District 6 jumped across Highway 311. It had not been on that northern, uh, west, eastern side of Highway 311. When we jumped across, we missed a guy who was living in, in a trailer and the precinct line included him. And so he was inadvertently left out all on his own. Um, so we wanna, uh, and it just so happened that that line was also used by the house rep districts so we couldn't merge them into precinct 74 which is in district 2 um, because of that line so he needs to go back into district 6 to avoid even if we just said well we use a precinct lockout it would still be one registered voter voting in that precinct 22 lockout um, no voter confidentiality in that instance 
Um, same sort of situation, Precinct 106, um, which is in District 3, uh, right around South Hollywood, Corporate Drive, and West Tunnel Boulevard. We were, uh, I was really, the intention was to use Corporate Drive as a very smooth, easy boundary to follow. Instead of going down Corporate Drive, then up South Hollywood, then that back down um, West Tunnel Boulevard, we'll just make it easy. But inadvertently, there was one registered voter in that area. Again, a precinct lockout was created. We don't want to um, mess up his uh, this person's voter confidentiality, so we want to put that back into District 2. It's uh, one individual. Then there was Precinct 112. That was the boundary. Um, it's right on the boundary between Districts 1 and District 8. We were moving the uh, district boundary down. There is what I would consider uh, a very difficult to follow boundary between those two districts. It follows the old, very old Southern Pacific Railroad right away, which I think has a, a power line there, but there's really, there's no railroad there. And it's, it's very hard to identify where that is. So we were moving it, the, the district boundary down from that railroad right away to, I believe it's James Road. Again, the rep, rep district ended up using the Southern Pacific Railroad right away as their district boundary. So we could not move, merge Precinct 112 with Precinct uh, 35 as originally intended. So we're going to put it back into Precinct 52. And there were five registered voters in that area. So I will pass this maps around just so you can see that. Thank you, Josh. Any other questions, Mr. Lamar? Any other questions, board members? Let's give it a minute so they can pass it around to look at it before we proceed. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate Thank you, Josh. Item two, matter pertaining to the issuance of notice to proceed for plans and specifications for demolition of Upper Little Caillou Elementary School in response to Hurricane Ida. The recommendation is that the board issue a notice to proceed as per contractual agreement to grow Flores Positary LLC for plans and specifications for the demolition of Upper Little Caillou Elementary School in response to Hurricane Ida, funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds authorize the advertising of bids, direct any major project changes to be reported to the Buildings, Food Service, and Transportation Committee prior to advertising for bids, and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So moved. Call for a second, and I'll second. Actually, moved by Mr. Hamner. Second by Mr. Uh, by this Hart, calling for unanimous second. Very good. Any public comment? Any other board members? 
Any objections? None heard so ordered. Next item. Okay, number three, matter pertaining to the issuance of notice to proceed for plans and specifications for construction of Upper Little Caillou Elementary School. The recommendation is the board approve, excuse me, the board issue a notice to proceed as per contractual agreement to Grow Flores Positary LLC for plans and specifications for the construction of Upper Little Caillou Elementary School. Funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds authorize the advertising of bids direct that any major project changes be reported to the Buildings, Food Service, and Transportation Committee prior to advertising for bids and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So moved. Mr. Ford? Second. Second. Actions for unanimous section. Second without objection. Any uh, public comment? Mr. Ford? Any other board members? Any objections? None heard so ordered. Would it be prudent to ask for any comment at this point? Yes, sir. Mr. Uh, Ogeron will be given the floor for comment. So going back to what Mr. Ford said earlier about, about projects coming to a head, we, we want to thank everyone who's worked on this school in particular. There's a lot of people working to get these two recommendations on the table. Adam and All South, we're looking at right. you in particular. Um, a lot of back and forth with you and our architects, Houston, Andy, and your crew. Y'all did a tremendous job getting everything to Adam so we could submit it to get to this point. Tricia, I see you here, principal of this school. I hope this speaks so well for your faculty, staff, and, and your community that this is going to get started relatively soon. So we're very confident, speaking to Andy, that this process is going to get started soon. The demolition package is going to get started, demolition soon, plans soon with construction not long thereafter. So we hate to put timelines out just yet. It's premature, but this won't be that long a process. So Adam, thank you all again. Two years, in my opinion, is not a very long time that we had to wait to get to this point. Um, but, but we're here. So appreciate everybody that's worked on that staff as well Becky uh, just just I could name a bunch of people that were at the table throughout this whole process we, we uh, had a lot to get done to get this point thank you board for approving this for that community and that school thank you and if I can add to that my heartfelt thanks to each and every one of you as well that the, these two communities that we're voting on tonight have lost a lot that the parents have lost a lot the students have lost a lot they have to go to school and ride a bus and, and look at a dilapidated building every day. They pass in front of it. Uh, the community members, uh, all of you have worked so hard and we've finally gotten to the point where we can move forward. Okay, item number four, matter pertaining to the issuance of notice to proceed for plans and specifications for demolition of Grand Caillou Elementary School in response to Hurricane Ida. The recommendation is that the board issue notice to proceed as per contractual agreement to the Merlin Group LTD for plans and specifications for the demolition of Grand Caillou Elementary School. In response to Hurricane Ida, funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds authorize the advertising of bids, direct that any major project changes be reported to the buildings, food service and transportation committee prior to advertising for bids and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So, so moved. What was that? Yeah. So moved, Mr. Ford, unanimous second? Mr. With no objection? I made the motion. Oh, you made a motion, excuse me, by Mr. DeHart. Unanimous second? With no objection. Any public comment? Mr. Ford? No, ma'am. Any other board member? Any objections? None heard, so ordered. Recommendation. Or number five, matter pertaining to the issuance of notice to proceed for plans and specifications for construction of Grand Caillou Elementary School. The recommendation is that the board issue a notice to proceed as per contractual agreement to the Merlin Group LTD for plans and specifications for the construction of Grand Caillou Elementary School. Funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds authorize the advertising of bids, direct that any major project changes be reported to the buildings food service and transportation committee prior to advertising for bids and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. Move. Move. 
moved by Mr. DeHart. Second. S second. Call. Calling for unanimous second. Any public comments? Mr. DeHart? I'm so happy that we at this point for both of the schools, the one previous. Oh, excuse me, Mr. DeHart. I, I overlooked this lady. Please come. I apologize, Mr. DeHart. I That's did okay. not see That's her. That's quite all right. Please state your name and address. Rosalind Warren, 122 Quebec Street, Homer, Louisiana, 70364. Thank you. Um, I, I wanted to insert this here. I think maybe I missed some portions of the discussion earlier about all of the construction going on with the schools. And my comment is, has anyone discussed asbestos, the presence of asbestos in many of these schools? And how that is going to be addressed. Point of order, ma'am, we are discussing Grand Kai Elementary School right now. Okay. All right. But if you contact Okay. And or if you contact me, I'll be more than glad to tell you about that. Okay. Just public awareness in terms of the presence of this best. Or if you're here afterwards, we can address that. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Well, I'm glad for many reasons that it's it's about fixing schools that are broken. Whenever you had to put two schools into one, it was very hard on everybody. And to now have a community to stay alive and have a reason for them to come back to their community. The population all over Terrebonne Parish has shifted because of the hurricane. And I'm just saying, whenever you're talking about an elementary school and the young children, I, my heart is about you know trying to be as close to, to the parents as you can get. And all I'm saying, I'm glad we had the option we have right now. But I'm, I'm strongly in favor of this. And Mr. Lee Rett is the architect on staff. Uh, he's done many great jobs under budget, and I'm very proud to say that. And he's not the only architect, but I'm just saying he's having this project. So I just want, want to give uh, accolades to him. And I'm, I'm glad he's working on the project, and I know it's going to be done, like I said, Ms. Andra said, as fast as possible through the process. And thank you, Adam. unpopular opinion but you know all glory be to God because let me tell you something two years ago when they came back I, I was three years ago I was disappointed that I wasn't on the committee for the the uh, capital projects outlay and, and the things going on. I was a little disappointed in that and I understand it was premature in my uh, time on the on the board so I get it but about three years ago I, I prayed several times about you know let's find a way to not just be selective on who we build or what we build but let's get the whole school system pumped up and beautified right and mm -hmm. then two years ago i brought a, a agenda item to committee and i thought it was going to gain some traction and, and it was looking good but then it, it, it failed and fast forward six months later and we have hurricane ida so you know, careful what you wish for, because you just may get it, you know, and, and um, hey, maybe it's my fault, but maybe I'm to blame that we're getting this brand new Grand Kai Elementary, we're getting a brand new Upper, upper uh, what's it? Uh, upper Low Kai. Upper <laughs> but it's like, you know, when you're in God's favor, like I feel I am, these things are happening, and I'm excited about it. I know uh, some of you may not be as excited, but let me tell you, Three years ago, I was feeling defeated. Tonight, I'm standing on the rock. I'm, I'm feeling good, you know? So uh, thank God we're getting this done. And thank God for that community. So I'm proud, I'm happy, thank you. Are we standing on that rock with you, sir? Very well. Mm -hmm. Anyway, other board members? Any objections? None heard so ordered. And, and Dr. Tron, Mr. Lee Red, thank you for all the work you did on this project, getting it ready so Adam and his team can submit it uh, appreciate that and we're gonna get both architects all the programming for both schools soon so we can start the design work and class counts and everything we need for both schools we'll get with Tricia and Amanda and uh, we'll, we'll get specifications to get started so thank you in advance that was five that was number five that was number mm -hmm. five yes, okay I thought I still had one left <laughs> Mr. Dehart I want to make a comment and I hope nobody takes it negative. 
we get these project managers out of it and let these architects go because I tell you what, we're in the process of this here. And look, every building we've ever built in years past, whenever we got the notice to proceed, it goes much faster. So I just don't want nothing getting in the way. And again, Adam, thank you. And everybody else that was up to this point, thank you. But let these guys uh, put your foot on the accelerator. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trump. Thank you, sir. Uh, Number six, item six, agenda. personnel section 6A is the announcement of administrative assignments for 2023-2024 school year. That's information only. So we have central office staff and all school level principals that are in position this school year. Can you point out who's new and uh, who's been changed around? What was that, Mr. Hill? Yes, oh, yes. So. I have an asterisk by one position, and that is Bayou Cane Adult Ed Administrator, and that was a lateral transfer from our vocational school, that's Ms. Sandra Smith, to Adult Ed for a retirement uh, filling of a, a position. Everyone else was in position prior to the year ending. Thank you. Okay, item B is personnel actions for the period of June 23rd, 2023 through July 21, 2023. For your information only, that's provided for you. Item C is a leave of absence, family and medical leave. The recommendation is that the board approve a family and medical leave in accordance with policy file F-11.4A for Debbie M. Berg, School Food Service Technician at Grand Caillou Elementary School, beginning August 3rd, 2023 through October 31st, 2023 medical. So moved. Moved by Mr. Hamlin. Second by Mr. Voisin. Any public comment? Mr. Hamlin? Still coming. Mr. Voisin. Any other board members? Any objections? None heard so ordered. Okay. The next one is a recommendation that the board approve a leave of absence without pay in accordance to policy file F-11.10 for Shonda M. Boudreaux, school bus operator in transportation department, beginning July 31st, 2023 through January 3rd, 2024, personal. Second. Move Mr. Crowder, second by Mr. Hamner. Any public comment? Mr. Crowder? Mr. Hamner? No, ma'am. Any other board members? Any objection? None heard, so ordered. And item seven is a matter bearing upon pending litigation Jacqueline Calloway versus Terrebonne Parish School Board and Berkeley Insurance Company, docket number 185151, 32nd Judicial Court, Parish of Terrebonne, State of Louisiana. Executive session is now called. Madam President, uh, I'd like to move that we deviate so we can have the legislative report before we go into executive session, if possible. Without, uh, you, you're asking for a deviation on the agenda? Yes. So With, can, uh, we can do that without objection. Do we have a, a motion? Do we have a second? Second, Mr. Crowders. Do we have any objections? Excuse me, do we have any public comment? Any any additional comments, sir? No, ma'am. Any, any other board members? Do we have any objections? None heard, so ordered. Ms. Ms. Benoit. Okay, thank you. I have quite a bit. So as everyone knows, the legislative session has just finished and also the um, the veto recall vote session we finished and uh, so we have quite a few that um, the governor has signed we have some that um, that are still um, being considered um, they're pending financial um, consideration but I'll I'll give you uh, a little summation of all the ones that we know that are passed right now um, there were 76, and I forgot to count how many actually did pass, but these are the ones that just pertain to K-12 school districts. I mean, we have some that pertain to higher ed, but I'm not addressing those. Um, the first one is um, that requires display of the national motto, In God We Trust, in every public elementary, secondary, and post-secondary education classroom. I think we're taking care of that. We have that already. Is that correct, yes. Superintendent? Um, the next is that uh, it creates, this is um, 
HB 9, I'm sorry, I should be saying the numbers. The first one was HB uh, 8. HB 9 uh, creates and provides for a program to provide state funding for the education of students with exceptionalities not enrolled in public school. This is one that's pending um, the Senate Finance Committee, so we just have to wait and see on that one. Um, the next is HB 12. It prohibits promotion to the fourth grade of certain students whose reading deficiencies have not been remediated by the end of the third grade. We have HB 21 that provides relative to extended leave for school bus operators and public school employees. There's a lot more detail with this. It would be so long to read each one of them, but if anybody wants to go in to the legislative web page and look for these numbers to see all the details of these bills. Um, I encourage you to do that. Um, there's HB 68, which authorizes public high schools to offer a course of instruction in the history and literature of the Bible. And by the way, um, the operative word here is authorize. It does not require the schools to do that. Um, I'm hoping that maybe we can do that here in Terrebonne Parish. I imagine that it has to be um, a class that would have enough students to sign up for it in order to offer it, maybe not in every high school, but in those that we have the students that um, are desiring this uh, particular class. Um, we have um, HB 69 provides for the screening and diagnosis of students with respect to dyslexia. I think we have this pretty much already. I don't know if this was required, but in, they might just be enhancing this um, policy or bill. Um, another one is HB 86, which creates the Protect Teacher Act its immunity from civil uh, liabilities for teachers. We have HB 103, adds financial literacy as a required course for high school students. HB 117, requires public schools to provide free menstrual products in easily accessible locations. And this is pending Senate. Um, finance. We have uh, our local uh, representative, Amadi, that um, put forth this particular bill, HB 121, which requires public schools to provide at least one recess period per school day in schools with any grade, kindergarten through fifth grade. We're, we've already done that. Okay, great. HB 169 provides for school safety protocols for elementary school students at drop-off and pickup points. And I think we already done that as well. HB 191 provides relative to teacher certification. This particular one is um, really for the Louisiana State Department of Education to address. Um, it'll affect us, but they're the ones that have to provide action on this particular bill. HB 242 provides relative to corporal punishment in elementary and secondary schools. And this is basically no, corpor no corporal punishment for students with exceptionalities. HB 282 requires free school breakfast and lunch for certain students. This is for um, the students that have that um, that are on um, free and reduced lunch already, I believe, and I think it we we're already doing some of that already. Right, that's what I thought. Right, at all schools, right. Right, that, that, that's right. We get reimbursed by the State Department and then whatever the actual cost, we're gonna get the additional funds for that. That's correct. 
Okay, HB 289 provides relative to organ donation instruction in public high schools. HB 315 provides relative to administration of public schools. Um, this is a, a Bessie report that's gonna be required annually um, to legislators regarding special education requirements. HB 316 provides for Louisiana High School Senior Voter Registration Day. And this is to take place the first Tuesday after the first Monday in May. I'm just wondering how that's going to affect whether or not our senior students are even going to be in school. It, they are. Okay. HB 326 requires fund foundational numeracy skills standards as a component of teacher education programs. So I believe that this is one if a teacher is teaching um, fourth through eighth grade, they have to have these particular competencies in order to teach these grade levels. Um, HB 348 provides relative to school safety and this is just an enhancement of an existing um, bill that we already have. Um, HB 348. HB 353 provides relative to students' behaviors, discipline, and behavioral and mental health. And this um, adds that students may be absent up to three days for mental or behavioral health. HB 367 um, provides relative to pupil appraisal and services for children transitioning from early steps to services provided by the local public school system upon their third birthday. HB 412 establishes a program to be administered by the Louisiana Educational Television Authority for the purposes of encouraging reading for young children and creates a fund within the state treasury for the purpose of funding this program. HB 462 requires public school governing authorities to post certain fiscal information on their websites. HB 472 requires the state Board of Elementary and Secondary Education to grant five-year teaching certificates to applicants who hold out-of-state teaching certificates and who meet other criteria. HB 644 creates affordable digital textbook and learning material and pilot programs. SB 7 provides relative to access to certain materials in public school libraries. This is the denial of access or limited access to students on any sexual explicit materials. Um, so that cannot be exposed to minors. Um, SB 81 provides for the associate education program, educator program, and I believe this is the um, teachers that have associate degrees that will be able to teach in schools, but I don't know if it goes into effect now or I think they have to, right, the State Department still has to rule over the, the requirements for that. So it probably would go into effect next school year. SB 177 provides relative to required accelerated instruction for certain students. Um, so it refines the accelerated instruction policy that our bill that already exists. And then um, finally, SB 207 creates the School Safety Act. And this also increases the number of safety drills that we currently have. Is, um, 
that policy is about. Now, I know that there were some that Mr. Hamner addressed regarding um, the, the teacher retirement um, oh, fund uh, that they were doing something with the teacher retirement fund. Do you know about that bill? Yeah, I know a lot about that bill. Uh, for uh, that specifically specifically applies to retirees. We created a uh, the teachers retirement system board of trustees has created a new uh, 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 direct funded uh, cola account, which which means that uh, it, by a certain year the uh, cost of living adjustments and this was groundbreaking uh, legislation. Um, we were one of the few systems in the country that will have uh, direct funded, directly funded COLAs that will give a 2% COLA to retired teachers, state employees, uh, school employees, and, and state uh, police every two to three years. So was that passed during that this legislative That has passed session? unanimously. There was one lone vote against it from uh, a senator from North Louisiana who I just believe he had a uh, fourth grade teacher that he still had some hard feelings about. <laughs> and, uh, but it, it passed through the, uh, the House and the Senate uh, uh, without objection except for that one. And uh, our retirees will uh, be able to look forward to uh, a, not guaranteed, but pretty much a stable, more consistent and predictable um, cost of living adjustment and in the meantime the uh, the current system which is a gain sharing system will uh, will continue to be in force until the uh, uh, COLA account is fully funded and that's, that's what that was about okay so that's it there's your legislative session for 2023. Thank you so much. That's a lot of work. Back to um, the uh, number seven. We're going to have to go into executive session. Do I have a motion? motion Mr. Motion Ford. Second. 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 Mr. Uh, Dehart. Yes. Uh, any public comment? Mr. Ford, Mr. Dehart, any other board members? No objection. None heard so or not. Absolutely.